Welcome back to another episode of the Evo 6 STI Killer presented by Coyorad. Today we are giving this thing an interior makeover. Let's start with an update on our engine build. We literally have everything to put this car together except we are missing one set of bearings from King, and that is the standard clearance uh, setup. So we wanna make sure we have a couple of different variances in terms of when we're putting the block back together and we're not down waiting for bearings. So that will come hopefully within the next week or two. So expect all this wonderful stuff to start going together. We're gonna show you exactly how that does come together. The one thing we are gonna do today is paint the block. As you can see, the block has been cleaned up, ready to go, but we've noticed it's kind of rusty and dirty, so we're gonna give it uh, a blast of the engine enamel from Duplicolor. And there we've got a freshly painted black block here. I think it looks pretty good. We're gonna slap another coat of this stuff on and call it done. For those of you wondering, I've had a lot of questions about this. This is a 3M handle and actually it just pops onto any aerosol can just like that. And it really works exceptionally well because I find it relieves a lot of the tension of you know having to paint something with a prolonged period of time. Uh, with your finger versus using this as a trigger. So it works exceptionally well. Uh, I'll put a link in the description in Amazon. I don't know if they have this specific model. This is like five years old, but uh, definitely something you wanna get into or get if you're looking to do some painting. So with this done, I think it's time we move on and show you what we're doing in the interior. We're gonna end up cleaning the entire interior. It's pretty dirty. It just needs a, a proper cleanup, which we'll get to. Uh, at the end, that's something that's not sexy or, or problematic at this point. What we want to really tackle is the door cards here. As you can see, these are coming off and they're just, they're faded. Look at that, I'll just, <laughs> there you go. This is unfortunately what the, the door card looks like from Mitsubishi. Let's see if I can pull this out here and then take this whole card off. Um, I did end up picking up some fabric, so we'll see if that's going to work for me. Ooh. Oh, yeah. The clips are breaking, I think. Yeah, not ideal. Yeah, well, they're very old. Yep. So, oh, come on. Oh, come on. I got to get the panel popper. Okay. Wow, this corner is like really tight in here. Holy smokes. Did we miss it fast? I don't think so. I think it's just, it's on there. Wow. Man. What is wow. Holy. Holy. There, there we go. go. Wow. Zah. Holy. Yeah, that one broke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's I figured... half of them got left behind. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Some of them broke. Some of them didn't. Oof. It's a nasty mess with this. Holy smokes. I I kind of hate this like goo that they yeah. used back in the uh, the late 90s, early 2000s that's for not, doors. That's not factory, is it? This is factory, yeah. It yeah. Really? It's just been opened up a ton of times. So like usually this plastic sheet is on here once and it's clean, but now you can see it's been pulled off and on a bunch of times, which is created this massive mess. Was he hiding his stash in the door or something? What's going on? You never know why people take this stuff off. Usually to get at the, the door, no. There's, there's no secret drug stash in oh, here. That's disappointing. And here we've got our door card. And for fabric, 
Here are two options. This is kind of a black suede that I ended up picking up at our local fabric land. Um, it's kind of the least offensive color. I think it matches pretty well. It just doesn't match with the black, or sorry, I'm sorry, with the blue seats. And here's the other fabric that I ended up picking up. And this is uh, more of a, not a suede, I'd say more of like a, a wool style blue. And I thought it would match our seats pretty closely. It's, it's close, but they're a little sun worn and whatnot. So they're a, a lighter blue. So I think we're gonna go with this and what we're gonna do here is use some of this 3M Super 77 uh, adhesive spray. Quick note, I bought the fast drying kind. I suggest going with uh, the medium and slow. That'll give you more time to work with this because what you would usually do is spray this on and then you've gotta, you gotta let it tack up, which you will, usually would take about, I don't know, maybe five minutes and then you can start putting this on. This dries very quickly. We have it, it starts tacking within a minute and then you're kind of like trying to get it done very quickly. You're rushing. Uh, unfortunately, that has created a, an issue for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna spray half the side here and then we're gonna apply the fabric and then do the other half. Now it is time to lay the fabric down here. Let me make sure I've got my, my coverage right. Oh, she's sticking already. See, it's, it's kind of crazy how quickly it hits. So I want to make sure that, uh, oh yeah, I got to come up a bit here, huh? Yep. Well, DP, she's, uh, this is a tough one to do. Let me it's tell you. It's tricky for sure. It's way different than anything else I've worked with here. It's not like torquing nuts and bolts. No, it? it really isn't. And, and um, I'm not necessarily sure where like the right place to start is and whatnot, but well, this is the first time you've ever tried something like yeah, this, Yeah, right? yeah, fair, fair, exactly. So, so we don't we know what we're doing when it comes to upholstery, that's no, for sure. No, we don't. Uh, we did watch a couple of YouTube videos. It's amazing what you can learn on YouTube yeah. today. One was really bad. Yeah, one, one was, was terrible. One was pretty decent. Yeah, um, just kind of like everything on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see if we fall into that bad category here. Or, uh, <laughs> I think we're there, I think we're there, but. Or not, so as you can looks... see, you can stretch a lot of this stuff out. Like if there's a little bit of a crease like that, you can kind of pull it out and whatnot. Now this is where the death over here. the real struggle is here. Oh, see, I got a couple. Oh, those are, looks like those. Are, this here, see, holy. Crease master 5000 over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good way to put it. Let's see, I just don't know which way I should go here, DP. Hmm. I just don't know. I think we're, uh, we might be dead in the water here. I don't know if I can pull this. Maybe if I just pull this up for a second and then see if I continue to just run it around, run it around. Oh, see, it, like, it's creasing there, it's creasing here. Ah! Got this more is so. Than my grandma's curtains this here. This is PC. so frustrating, yeah, man. It really is. A it's, it's so hard it's to like job. get right and not crease it. And like, look at here. this one here. Like I'm oh, just, yeah, I'm, I'm look, I've got a full fold. Oh yeah. It's like a full fatty fold here. <laughs> like I just, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save this. Whose idea was it to do this job? I thought of all the things, we're building motor. I know, Rewrapping right? this seems like it, it would be easy. It should have been a five minute job. Should have been. And uh, of course, this is now turned into, we could shoot a full episode <laughs> on this, I feel like yeah. now. Of how not to do it anyway. Yeah. So let's see here. See, okay. Oh now you're gonna just chase that all the way down the end? I, I don't know. I, I think that's the only thing I can do here. Let's see, let's see. Can this be salvaged? On this episode of Fail Academy, what are we failing at today, PT? This right here. Wow, and it just keeps going. It's like <laughs> I just keep moving. I'm just gonna move it around and around in circles here. Well, we kind of got those creases worked out. Kind of. Oh, wow. I did not expect this to be so difficult. So let's see. I, I just want to remove this now just to have a gander. Have a look, see. Look at, look at this here. Look at the, the creases here. Well, I wasn't going to show that to the people, but it's, now you're uh, going to do it. Uh, well, 
What now, PT? What now? I think we have to strip it. Attempt and redo it again. It's so close, but it's just, it's not there. Well, we're there. Um, it's less than perfect, but I mean, I just can't take myself to pull this off and try again because I feel like it's just gonna end up in the, the same way here. As you can see, a lot of the creases that I was worried about have kind of gone away. So, oh, we've got a air pocket here. See this kind of stuff. You just gotta feel it out, find those spots and drive them in. But I mean, like, if you look at it overall, it's not terrible. No. Like it looks pretty decent. I still have to cut the, uh, the door handle out there. So it's just all these down here. There's a couple of little spots that are gonna definitely twerk me, um, but it is what it is. Well, we somewhat figured it out. As you saw there, uh, if you apply the, uh, this Alcantara in the middle first and then like stretch it outwards into the corners, it goes on much better than it did with these where we thought, oh, you start from one corner and go out because then it kind of like, it amplifies, if you stretch it, it amplifies the, uh, the distortion down in this area here and whatnot. So, uh, we've learned that that's the way to do it. And as you can see, they're not bad. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna give them a good seven, seven and a half out of 10, but uh, they're definitely much better than they were what was on here. So we'll call that a victory. I'm gonna try to be positive here and, and not let my OCD get triggered. So I think it is time we put these back on, but before we do that, we've got something special for the doors. We are gonna do a little uh, sound and vibration control by installing this boom mat material from DEI. It is a, uh, a two mil thick butyl core and it's uh, quite soft, almost rubbery, and it has like an aluminum sheet over top of it to seal it up. And it's got a peel and stick back on it. So Evos are kind of notorious for being tinny, you know, having a lot of vibration. I want my daily driver to, you know, just purr down the road yeah, exactly. here. Exactly, you want to enjoy the pure sounds of that 4G63, right, PT? So if we, if we tap on it, like this part isn't too rattly because it's got some bends in it and stuff, but if you go to the inside, it's quite, oh well, there, you really got a drum in there. Because the, you know, the outer door skin doesn't have a lot of uh, dampening built into it, it's just a big surface area to vibrate. It's gonna be your, your noisier area. So we'll install some of that and we'll give you a, a post tap test, see how much quieter it's gotten. All right, using our little DEI roller here to press it in and uh, we actually used a little of their optional high temp spray adhesive. They say you can use this when or if required and frankly, I think this stuff's sticky enough, it'll stick to just about anything, but no harm in making it even stickier. And uh, as you can see, we put two pieces down on the bottom and some smaller pieces up on the top there. Maybe, I don't know, 30 to 40% coverage on the uh, outer door skin there. And it obviously wouldn't affect this too much, but in here, it's like the tone is so much lower and there's no uh, reverberation to it. So it's really dampened that tremendously. So I think if you do that times four on all these doors, it's really gonna take a lot of the, the uh, boominess out of it. Sorry, boom mat, but it does take the boomy, bo boominess out, which is maybe why they called it boom mat. So. I think that's job done on this door. Three more to go, and then we'll figure out what to do about this nasty weather. Man, I don't think there's anything to do like about it. We just put it back on and... Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. Like, maybe you guys can post in the comments and let us know, 
Is there something that replaces that, that mm -hmm. looks a little bit better, or maybe we just need to buy new stuff? Look at that. The door cards are in, and I gotta say, Pete, they turned out better than I thought they would. They look really good. They passed the uh, three-foot eye exam pretty well, so if you get up really close around the edges, there's a couple spots that aren't perfect, perfect, but I give them like a nine and a half out of ten. I think they look nine really good. Nine and a half, wow, okay. You're being very generous. I appreciate that. I think they look good, and more importantly, well, maybe not more importantly, but just as impressively, listen to how the door sounds when I close it now. Before it had like a really like whap. Now it's got like a thud. Ooh. That's a manly thud thanks to that boom mat. That's got like that German it door does. closing sound. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. It, yeah. So. I like it a lot as well. That is a big improvement. So. And for those of you that are going to complain about the weight we have now added, it's okay. We're going to make that up in horsepower. Exactly. What do we add? Like two pounds, three pounds? So. We are moving on to fixing the dashboard. As some of you may recall, I wanted to replace this piece because it had these two wonderful holes from someone installing a, uh, I think it was a boost gauge and a wide band. So originally I thought, you know what, I'm gonna have this rewrapped by somebody with like a leather and that still exists. However, uh, a lot of you reached out and one of you, Joel, said, listen, I actually have a black dash. I'll send it to you. And I was like, thank you so much. You guys are awesome, by the way. I, I always appreciate the, uh, the kind and generous um, donations in terms of parts or, or great pricing that you guys provide to me. So he sent this over to me. He's, uh, he's on the, the west coast of Canada here, and <laughs> as you'll notice, it, it's dark, but it's not the black that I was looking for, unfortunately. So uh, again, Joel, thank you so much for providing this. I don't think I'm going to install it as is, but then me and Dave got the talking. You know, we just wrapped the inner door uh, cards there in this suede, so why don't we uh, mess up another item here? and try to wrap this or apply this onto the dash. I think it would look pretty cool. Like some of you, a lot of you mentioned actually flocking the dash and that's also an option, but I figured, you know what? This uh, material is gonna match the, the door cards perfectly. So I think we're going to attempt this. We have one, two, and actually a, a third dash that I ended up sourcing, which was also gray from, uh, from Japan. So we, we have three attempts at this. I think we'll be able to get one of them. Well, I think it turned out better than the uh, door cards, that's for sure. I like it, DP. Yeah, I think it looks I, pretty I, cool. I wasn't, I, originally I, when I thought about it, I didn't think I was gonna like it, but this actually looks pretty damn good. I think it adds a bit of that uh, premium feel to the interior with some Alcantara on the dash. Now the question I have for all of you guys, and Dave and I have been going back and forth on this, is what to do with the airbag slot here. I don't know if I can, I don't, uh, I don't know if this is gonna sit like this. All right, let's just put this down here. Um, should we wrap the airbag or should we leave it as is like that? So it adds a bit of contrast to like this dash here or should this all be Alcantara? I'm not, I don't know. I, I, I think we'll determine that once we've got uh, the dash and the car and everything, I think, and the, and the interior more complete. I think that'll give us a, a clearer picture of it, but for now, we're just gonna leave it as is. And uh, we're gonna not install this dash, we're gonna mock it up because we don't wanna put it in yet until we have the harness coming from Ohm Racing, and there's a couple other things that I need to do. There is the factory dash out of the Evo, and I mean, it's kinda cool with the blue gauges and everything, but- I like it. When we started to think about all of the data that we're gonna have available to us using this, Link G4 uh, plug-in ECU that's designed for the Evo 4 through 8, I believe it is. 
we, wanted, we wanted a dash that could display all of that information and we could have put in a bunch of gauges, but we wanted a cleaner setup to that than that. So that's why we decided to go with AEM's CD5. This is the logger dash, so the CD5L. And it is amazingly light. I forget the exact weight of it. It's like 331 grams. Not that that will mean a lot to you folks in the US. I think it's 11.7 ounces. It's got this carbon housing and it's a very bright uh, display that's readable in direct sunlight. We've used this in a few of our other project cars and we really like how programmable and how customizable it is. You've got these LED lights along the top that you would typically use as shift lights. And then you've got a light over here and another LED over here that's totally programmable. They're dimmable. We'll probably use these for turn signal indicators, but uh, you can also use them for like a high beam indicator. So this dash is very flexible and can really work very well in a streetcar application, although obviously it'll work extremely well in a race car or any kind of like off-road vehicle, UTVs. It's water sealed, so you can use it in a boat or a motorcycle. It's, it's an amazingly flexible unit. And the beauty of it is AEM has confirmed it to work with over 250 non-AEM products, including this Link ECU. In fact, uh, AEM, offers, uh, AEM offers this harness, which will plug directly into the CAN port on this ECU. So they've made this as simple as possible by, by building this plug and play harness for us. And as far as installation goes, the AEM also offers this universal flush mount kit. And this is available both for the CD5 like we're using or the CD7, which is their larger dash. And uh, we were talking with our buddy Dimitri, who's a, an AEM expert, and we said, you know, these, these two uh, toggle switches on the side of the dash here, which you normally use to scroll through the screens, you have up to seven screens here, including four main screens, a uh, on-charge screen, which you use for like lap timing or boost changing, uh, a startup screen. We were like, you know, if we put this behind the glass here or this plastic housing, we can't access these toggles. Do they have uh, momentary switches that we can use instead? And he's like, yeah, of course they do dummy, you should know that. And they also make this dash in a flat panel design. So instead of having this hood, it's a, it's a completely flat dash and uh, it's otherwise the same, but it would be much easier to install into a, you know, a factory cluster like we're going to try doing. So Pete actually went and bought this, uh, I, was it Evo eBay? 5, yeah. No, um, off uh, the Evolution Facebook group. Oh, cool. Okay. So this is out of Evo 5. Yep. And we're obviously going to gut it and mount this guy in here. And we talked about, you know, what, do we want to have some of these uh, gauges available for usage or not? And we've decided just to, lead, to delete, delete all of this stuff, but to keep this little band along the bottom, which actually has like, uh, what was the AYC light? And a few yeah, it's just got there. all the, the engine lights and, and chassis lights and all that jazz. Right. So we'll try to uh, keep that. But otherwise, we will use this universal mounting plate, trim it to size so that we can mount our CD5 in there.
Wow, that took a lot of time, didn't it, DP? It did, Holy it made a smokes. big mess, too. But I, I think it was well worth it. So as you can see, we have now ended up with pretty much a gutted backside of the cluster. I was really, really hoping that I could keep the plugs so we could try to make uh, the um, bulbs here work for like check engine and whatnot. We still may try to do something. If you guys actually have any suggestions, like I was thinking of taking that whole backside um, of like the wiring and whatnot. Dave's gonna pass it to me. This right here and like overlaying it and then maybe soldering wires to here or something. I don't know if you guys have suggestions on how to make this work since this is now gutted. The plugs aren't exactly going to fit into here. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you think you can figure that out how, to, how that works or we just directly wire to the bulbs, right? Like that's also an option there. So nevertheless, we had to gut it because we wanted to get this to fit into here. Took us a little bit of time to figure out the trimming and whatnot, but I think it's uh, it's pretty much perfect. And then you'll see, once again, there was just a lot of plastic work to make this all come together, but I think it was well worth it because now that's how this looks. And as you can see, it is sitting a little high because we may want to cut this out and show those, uh, those lights down here. So that is why it's a, a little bit higher. We also want to switch out this panel for the flush mount one. So the flat one, so it doesn't have this hood, which I think will also uh, work in our, our, for our benefit. And then finally, this is the piece that comes on here. There you go. So th that extra piece of plastic is a little bit thicker, but remarkably it still holds together. So you can hear it's, it's clicking in, into place on some spots. So, there you go, guys. There, that's what it's gonna look like. Um, we're gonna, why don't we throw this in the car right now and just have a quick peek at it. Well, what do you think? Looks great, man, I love it. Yeah, I, like it's just so clean and proper and tidy and it just fits very OEM-like with the clear plastic there. I really, really like it. And speaking of which, the dash looks, again, better than I expected. So I really like the Alcantara look. And you know, after a, a little bit of deliberation, me and Dave both decided that we're gonna leave the airbag as is because uh, if you cover this and this actually goes off, that may give us a problem or it may cause a problem with the airbag not working correctly. So we're gonna leave it as is like this. I think it looks pretty good. It, it has good contrast between the uh, the Alcantara and the vinyl, I suppose. I was gonna say leather, but not, and, and you know, the, the plastic here. So overall, I think this is a huge victory for us. Uh, one last thing we're gonna do, we're not gonna bore you with it, is just kind of clean up the interior, vacuum the, the carpet, give the seats a good wipe down, and, and that's about it. So I think we're gonna wrap this episode there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like today's content, think about subscribing, think about the notification bell, because uh, the more of you that subscribe and, and watch these videos, the, the more it helps us create more content. Welcome back to another episode of the Evo 6 STI Killer presented by Coil Rad. Today we are giving the interior a makeover.